For the longest time, us theorists struggled to get any idea of what the heck was going on in all of these games. Was it haunted robots? Was there a murderer? Was there two? Was this guy actually innocent? Was this a prequel or a sequel? Well, although I'd love to answer every single one of these questions for you, it would be a bad idea for me to tackle all of this at once. So for now, I'm going to tell you the most important things we know. And how Sister Location Custom Knight possibly solved the entirety of the FNAF lore. In other words, guys, Scott has handed us the key to the box. You can now open the elevator using that bright, red, and obvious button. Now to start off, let's discuss what we learned in the base Sister Location game. We found out that there was a giant underground facility that held very dangerous and strange animatronics. We found out that the animatronics were in fact being made by William. We also found out these things were actually made for the purpose of kidnapping kids. And once Baby or Funtime Freddy had a kid in their storage tank, the animatronic was scooped and the kid was taken away. We also learned that Baby has killed a child before and is seemingly more intelligent than the others. In the end, Baby combines with the other animatronics and becomes what we know as the Ennard. From there, she scoops out our main protagonist and takes over his skin. That is the basic idea of Sister Location, but it brings up an insane amount of questions. Custom Knight seemingly answered all of them. With something as simple as two cutscenes, I think we can start to understand everything. Before we get started, the character we play as in Sister Location is the character known as Mike Schmidt. His full name being Michael Schmidt. It's easy to miss, but when you first start Sister Location, Handy Unit actually tells us our name. Please enter your name as seen above the keypad. This cannot be changed later, so please be careful. Michael is actually William Afton's son. Now you may be thinking, that makes no sense, they have different last names. But actually, do you remember that TV show you had to sit through at the end of each night in the base game? It was called The Immortal and the Restless. We'll dissect that more in a moment, but the main theme of the show was that the purple-wearing vampire refused to believe that the kid was actually his. Despite what evidence there was for it, he wouldn't listen to reason and was very angry with his wife. In the end, they actually did get back together, but she never admitted to the kid not being his. And it's very possible that he continued to refuse that he was his, and him and his son grew very distant. To the point where his son may have actually just taken his mother's last name. This is all just speculation, but I think it's very close to what could be the case. He did grow up with William being his father though, and Mike seems to have wanted to please his father and work as hard as he could for him, maybe hoping for the day that his father would see him as his son. After a while, William and his wife had two more kids, a little girl and a little boy. He loved them very much, much more than Mike. But one day, his beloved daughter got too comfortable around the dangerous baby animatronic at Circus Baby's pizza parlor and was grabbed and killed inside of her. William was devastated and faked a gas leak to move all the animatronics into his underground storage. It's very possible that his wife left him at this time, and he did his best to protect his last beloved child by making a safe haven for him, where nothing could harm him, and also where he could teach him a lesson. He was going to teach him that his animatronics are something to be feared and are not toys. He set up three places to keep him away from the animatronics in various situations, learning to use the animatronics' flashlight weaknesses, learning survival skills against them, with the most likely harmless animatronics he'd made along with hallucinations. The nightmares were most likely not exactly what we see them as in FNAF 4. Remember what Scott told us. What is seen in the shadows is easily misunderstood in the mind of a child. And last but not least, he spoke to his son through the Fredbear plushie, guiding him, showing him that it's okay to talk to normal children, but absolutely do not go near an animatronic and fear them. Telling him, remember what you saw? It's very likely that he had seen a child die, whether it be his sister or something that William purposely set up in front of him. Now you may be wondering, why are there normal children down here with the kid? Sister Location showed us that this area is actually part of the underground facility. Part of the lesson was that kids are safe. But these aren't actually normal kids. These are actually Ennard kids, reanimated corpses of children that William kidnapped. Remember how the two kidnappings that we hear about both involve five kids? from the newspapers and this minigame. The reason I bring this up is because there are exactly five children down here, each one of them following along with William's plans, trying to strengthen his son's fear of animatronics. Then we have his so-called older brother, who is most likely supposed to represent Mike, but actually isn't Mike. Since William seems to be in control of these entered kids, he set this all up. Mike is supposed to be his older brother, being a complete jerk to him, making him grow to hate and fear his older brother. The reason why he wears Foxy the entire time is because the little boy would surely know it wasn't his brother once he's seen his face. Plus it adds to the animatronics or something to fear plan. 
Notice how in the beginning his brother has a slightly paler skin and black eyes. In fact, I used to think that they were two different people because of this. But actually it has a completely different meaning. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. The scooped skins only last one week before getting gross. They start looking fine, but as time goes on, the animatronic is more visible in the eyes and the skin darkens and rots. Exactly like what we've seen in this cutscene. Eventually, Michael's body began looking purple and gross, and he was moving in an inhuman way. Then suddenly, the entered bails. But that's not entirely the case. Notice how after the entered leaves, he still survives. Baby's voice tells him that he won't die. You won't die. And how is he still alive? Because there is still some entered inside of him. The part of entered that his sister was in. There really was no reason for all four of those animatronic innards to be in one body. And I doubt even one full-size animatronic innard needs to be in one human. Nearing the end of the week, closing in on the kid's birthday, the entered kids do something William did not expect. William's plans were ruined again. Something went wrong. The entered kids went too far in their attempt to scare the crying child. They put his head in the ordinary and seemingly harmless animatronic's jaws, and it crushed down on him. William was trying to protect him, but in the end, only tortured and killed him. At the moment, I can't say who or what character this child becomes. It is possible he survives and becomes immortal with an Ennard, although I think there is more of a chance he didn't. After this, William left the underground facility, and years later, he gets his son Michael to finish something for him. He tells Michael that he needs him to do this to save his sister. It's likely that the only way to save his daughter who resides inside a baby is to sacrifice a human, and William wasn't willing to kill himself. Now you may be thinking, that makes no sense. William could have found any body to use to help her escape, but that's not right. In fact, William had learned that the body needs to be specific, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's watch this groundbreaking cutscene piece by piece. Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. They were all there. Here, Michael is talking about how he found his way into the underground facility to find the leftover Ennard, and they were all there. This is why he kept coming back night after night. He was following Baby's orders until she trusted him enough to put herself and the others inside of him. They know that if they choose the wrong hosts, like the mechanics, the host can take over the body and become immortal like William. But the plan is to save William's daughter, which means she'll need a body that is willing to give over control. This is also probably why William often kidnaps kids. It's much easier for him to gain control over their weaker minds with his innard, compared to adults. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. Baby said she had never seen him before, but nearing the end of the nights, they start thinking Michael was William and made the decision to choose him, since he was the one that made them and knew what Baby and the others were capable of. In the fake slash non-canon night against Ennard, they keep talking to him as if he was William, because they thought that was who he is. <sighs> and I found her. I put her back together, just like you asked me to. She's free now. Mike had a goal going down there, this being fixing and freeing his little sister. Somehow she was broken, possibly because of that bad thing inside of her this being the deadly programming that was already inside of the baby animatronic. A lot of other animatronics in the FNAF universe don't have this ability to begin with, and it might be messing her up, causing her to not be what she could be. Michael helps take her out of that messed up programming, like taking out the little piece of the girl, this being the chip we take with us to the scooper. And along with that, he gave her a new body, one she could use to escape with along with the other innards inside of the animatronics that had no person in them to begin with. But something is wrong with me. I should be dead. Michael knows that being scooped and combined with Ennard doesn't kill people. It also seems weird that he'd think that being springlocked would kill him when he's partially an Ennard. So the reason why he thinks he should be dead is because he gave himself up for his sister. He figured that once she was inside of him, he would fade away and die. When he was scooped, his sister did take over his body, and Michael thought he died. Because it's not like two people would combine, and he willingly let her take it. So she did take over Michael's body, and straight from there, she went to clean up her dad's mess of the other dead kids. And this is where we see a very large tie-in to FNAF 1 and 3. In FNAF 1, we play as a character known as Mike Schmidt, a character with the same name as one of William's kids, and now a human shell encasing entered parts and the heart of William's daughter. She applied for the night shift to get alone with the animatronics. She went against the animatronics for a few nights, maybe trying to figure out if there were still souls attached. When she found out there was, 
After the first six nights, she came back once more for the so-called custom night. By now, her skin was terribly purple since it had been a week. Finally, she tears the animatronics apart, but their remains turn on her when she attempted to free them. She hid inside of the Springlock suit, thinking she knew how to use it and would be fine. But she didn't know about the water malfunction. When the suit got wet, it closed in on her and somehow broke her again. Once employees found her body, they sealed the safe room and sent the pink slip to Mike's home, saying he was fired for tampering with the animatronics, general unprofessionalism, and odor. She did tamper with them, and in the end, she tore them down. Plus the normal odor excuse, which I'll get into very soon. I'm sure she only took them apart similar to Mangle, so it's not like they were completely broken. And William probably wasn't working at the time. That's why he never noticed his son at work. He must be up to something else. The little girl lost control of the body after the suit broke her, and Michael came back, utterly confused as to why he wasn't dead. But something is wrong with me. I should be dead. But I'm not. I've been living in shadows. This possibly has two meanings. The first being what casual fans would assume. Springtrap living in the dark room, unknown to everyone. The second and real meaning, though, is that he was somehow still alive inside that body that his sister was in control of. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. He only has one thing he wants to do now. He needs to die for good and let his sister have that body. To fix her again. But he doesn't really know how he can, so he needs to find his dad. As confusing as that all sounds, this is what I believe happened in Five Nights at Freddy's. A game that seemingly had more to do with ghosts, that turned out to be more about zombie creating robots in eternal life. William himself is most likely immortal with the help of Ennard, and the son he doesn't even like is currently immortal inside of Springtrap. This also ties in perfectly with the show. This could possibly mean that since William and his son are immortal, his wife may actually be dead and restless. As in, actually a ghost? Get it? Immortal and the restless? A lot of that stuff is speculation, but I think with the help of these two cutscenes, we can start looking at everything in FNAF at a different angle. If you have some interesting theories regarding the new cutscenes, I'd love to hear them. Let's keep the sister location hype train running. Who knows what's in store for us next? Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you all have an awesome night. Goodbye!